And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for the patch 219 live reaction. This is our uh, first patch since whenever we had a whole bunch of balance patch changes in 218. This one isn't supposed to have any balance patch changes, but we do have a new champion coming. We have some new champion cards and we have a new game mode. We've uh, been kind of seeing some uh, information about that the last couple of days. Uh, but now here's the official release about them. So let's let's take a look. Let's see about all the new changes here to Legends of Runeterra. So we got the new game mode, the Path of Champions. Um, it's the new PVE, so one player adventure mode that's going to be replacing the Lab of Legends and the uh, Saltwater Scourge, which I guess is also Lab of Legends. So those are both going away. This is going to be online November 10th, 10 a.m. Pacific time, which is it's basically exactly 24 hours from whenever I'm recording this um, and they have a, an in-depth overview here uh, about the new game mode so let's go ahead and, and take a look at that this looks really cool though but let's let's take a look at that so um, all right the path of champions this, this is uh, what we have there's there is a YouTube video about it and everything recommend uh, checking that out of course um, and I'll, I'll have the link to the, you know, the patch 219 notes that will have the link to this. But basically, um, you know, you'll have the Path of Champions unlocked during, you know, as, as long as you have, you know, the game and everything. And it looks like you start as Jinx. And so you're going to play through with Jinx first. Um, and you'll have, like, your adventure with Jinx. You know, if hopefully you're familiar kind of with what the... Um, other Lab of Legends modes were kind of like, so you, you kind of understand this Path of Champions. And so you'll start with your pre, small pre-made deck and level up your deck and all that kind of stuff and go through. And then once you defeat Jinx, um, once you've <laughs> blasted your way through Augmented Antagonists, Piltover Patrols, and Smug Scholars to take on Vi, uh, then you'll be able to uh, take into your next adventure, or you'll get rewards to take into your next adventure and access to the Path of Champions full experience, the world map. Always gotta love the world map. So it looks like the world map uh, has some different, re you know, we're gonna have Piltover and Zon, Bilgewater, and Ionia unlocked right away, where there's gonna be five champions with each region um, unlocked. So it looks like 15 champions will be able to play in this mode right away. And then they're gonna, you know, they're gonna continue to add on. So they'll add on Noxus, Freljord, Demacia, Targon, Sharima, and Little Shadow Isles is kind of hidden down here. That looks pretty awesome. Um, and I'm guessing these are like different bosses that you're going to face, you know, because they said that that uh, Vi was a boss. So maybe like you'll have, you know, Vi, Lulu, Gangplank, Ezreal, Zed, Nautilus, and Victor for different bosses. So that looks really cool. All right, how do I exit? <laughs> I guess I did that. All right. Uh, let's see. There is going to be, um, there's going to be some new things, and so yeah, from the world map you get to you know select like which champion you want. You, they have the three regions available. This is a new thing though that that wasn't like the other Lab of Legends is that you must own at least two champion cards for the champion that you're going to be playing. So for so these are going to be the fifteen champions that are going to be available here. So if you want to play like Twisted Fate or Misfortune, Jace, the new one, Pike, Lee Sin, or really, right, like any of these champions, you need to own two copies of that champion in your collection to be able to play them on the uh, Path of Champions. So that's new. That wasn't the case before. Um, so if you've been saving up wild cards or anything, you know, make sure, you know, that's something to, to think about. Um, let's see. Uh, you'll also earn... Uh, reputation and relics this is going to be a new thing so you can see here that the jinx has two slots next to it so that means it has two slots for relics and you're going to earn these different relics if you can kind of read what the these things over are over here they're really small um, but these are like some common ones like for example this one says spell shield or plus two plus one or when i'm summoned deal one to all enemies and so you're going to earn these relics and then you uh once you level up your jinx you're going to get you know like reputation points to level up your jinx then you'll unlock your first slot then you'll eventually you'll unlock a second slot and you'll be able to use these powers so that whenever you start the path of champions your jinx will automatically have like you know spell shield and deal one to all enemies whenever it enters and so on and then those are just commons and they'll get better after that and that's going to be important to help you because 
the Path of Champions will be able to, um, or there's going to be di different difficulties in the uh, Path of Champions. Adventure difficulty ramps up as you progress. So if you remember, like with Lab of Legends, you'd have like your normal, your hard, heroic, legendary. So you'd have different difficulties. And so like when you get to those different difficulties, you're going to want more powerful champions and cards and starting deck and that kind of stuff. Where um, with the Bilge Water, Saltwater Scourge, there wasn't the different difficulties, but they're going to have the different difficulties here. Um, so let's see what else. So yeah, so it is free to play. Yes, but you need to own the two copies of your champions. Um, and eventually, yes, they do plan on progression reset at some point next year. So, you know, they're going to be keep continuing add on and everything, but like whatever you get for your progression and, you know, earning your different reputation with your champions and stuff, it does look like they will reset at some point next year. Um, I'm expecting that to be months down the road. Um, that's something to, to kind of think of. Um, they don't have any plans to support, you know, uh, PVP. So two player um, within Path of Champions right now. Because it says you're going to face some tough encounters in the Path of Champions. And so hopefully like the harder difficulties are going to be, you know, a real challenge. And they want to give you all the, uh, you know, freedom to be able to encounter those however you like. Um, let's see. Oh, also, um, they are planning. Oh, so, you know, is it free to play that question? They're planning on exploring additional opportunities for premium content as we develop the Path of Champions as a permanent mode. So possibly there could be some kind of like you know, premium, like you pay extra to, to play a specialized version of the Path of Champions or something. You know, we don't know. Obviously, like that's just a um, maybe something down the road eventually. But it looks super, super cool. I can't wait for tomorrow to get into it um, and, you know, get all of my <laughs> all the 15 of the champions at max level and everything and unlock and beat the hardest difficulty with each one. So that's going to be tomorrow. Like, like I said, uh, November 10th. Uh, 10 a.m. Pacific time is when that is going to be live. So can't wait for that. All right, so let's see what, what else we got. Okay, so that's the new game mode. Um, so we're going to have a new event, the Path of Champions event and Mega Event Pass. I've, I haven't read through any of this stuff now. I, I read through that last thing before. Um, so yeah, so we're going to have the new event, including... You can earn up to 35 rewards, including new emotes, guardians, card backs, and more. All right, then we're going to have some new cards. We talked about Jace will be PNZ's newest champion. Um, but we don't know... I don't know too much about the other new cards. So I haven't checked out these cards yet. So this... Here's the new cards, which again, that link's right in there. So Hextech Anomaly, 6 mana focus, which of course, you know, Jace cares about you playing 6 plus cost spells. So we know that we're going to have some new 6 plus cost spells. And it looks like are all these... Yes, yeah, so they're all Piltover and Zon. So every single new card is going to be Piltover and Zon. And there's not that many. There's, you know, only, um, you know, about 10 or so cards. Because not all these are actual cards. So more created. Anyway, Hextech Anomaly. When you draw or create me in hand or each round start, while I'm in your hand, transform me into a random 6 plus cost spell. So that's... That's really weird, but I think so. Basically, this is just going to turn into you know a random six plus cost spell. Um, I don't know if that means you know it says or each round start. So I don't know about each round start. So each round does it just like turn into a different spell? I, that's what I would guess. Um, the only thing that gives me a little pause on that it says um, you know you transform it into the the spell. And then that spell shouldn't have like this ability on it, right? So I, so I don't know if if that's exactly going to be just like it transforms into one random spell and that's it, or if it keeps on transforming into a spell every single round start. We'll kind of kind of have to see. Uh, those of y'all on YouTube, if you know, you know, feel free to put a comment about that. But um, you know, that's just going to be a an odd card, and just you know, we'll see how good that one is. All right, we got assembly line six mana summon two forge workers. Forge workers are just three threes. So you get two three threes. Um, so this is just just like the um, you know like the three mana make a three three Demacia spell, but now we, we want six mana spell. So six mana get two three threes. I think that's a perfectly reasonable spell. You know it's kind of like the Brood Awakening 
kind of thing. But you know, if you want your six, you know, your six plus cost spells that you can play proactively, uh, if you're in Piltover and so on, um, you know, and you want that, and so it's like you know, you save your spell mana round one, round two, and then round three you play assembly line. Uh, you can get your two at three three. So um, perfectly fine, reasonable spell. Chat saying they think that they, this will transform every single round, and so you know you'll be able to wait until it's a really good spell that you want. All right, the Forge of Tomorrow, new PNZ landmark. When I'm summoned, summon a Forge worker. When you cast a six plus cost spell, destroy me to refill your spell mana. Pretty nice, pretty nice, honestly. So you know you get your generic three mana three three. But then once you play an expensive spell, you get three mana back. That's actually a pretty good landmark. Pretty nice. Um, Albos, Albus Pharos. Seven mana, six five, quick attack. When I'm summoned, draw Jace. Oh, Jace has a boat. Okay, so Jace has a boat. How about that? Well, only Yasuo would get a boat. All right, so Jace has a boat. But then also as attack, deal one to the enemy Nexus for each six plus cost spell you've cast this game, increase it by one. Ooh. So it auto so automatically automatically, sorry, deals Nexus damage. If you've played a lot of expensive spells, that can be a lot of damage. Alright, cool. We got Pharaoh Sky Cruiser, four mana, two, four, elusive. Grant me plus two plus zero once you've cast a six plus cost spell this game. Yeah, I mean, you, so you can technically have a four mana, four, four elusive. It is good that it's, it's grant me, you know, once you've done that and not just, um, when I'm summoned, you know, so you can, you get this bonus later on in the game. So, you know, it's, it's kind of like the Mage Seeker, um, Insider, I believe it's the Mage Seeker Insider. That's the four mana, four, four that gets the plus two, plus two. So, you know, you'd have a six, six, this one's same kind of card, but you'd have a four, four elusive. Not so bad. So, you know, like, again, that could be a good filler for the deck. Uh, you got a 3-mana three 3-2 three, quick attack. Grant tech allies everywhere, plus 1, plus 1, once you've cast a 6-plus cost spell this game. Whoa, that's awesome. <laughs> you know, so, like, if you want, you know, a Heimer deck that gets your tech allies everywhere, plus 1, plus 1, once you play, that's pretty cool. So there's, you know, and that's a tech also. So this this is like, you know, where you can put actual tech into your deck. So if you have Heimer in play, you cast this Handler. That does go towards leveling up your Heimer because it is tech. So that's cool. Oh, wow. Yeah, and chat has, Dark Fortress has a good thing. This Hextech Handler with a Glorious Evolution. Your Glorious Evolution can be, can be your six plus cost spell. And now, you know, because Glorious Evolution says all of your cards are tech, and so now all of your they'll all have an additional plus one plus one. Yeah, that sounds great. Yeah, this with iterative improvement. Ooh, yeah, just make some more of them. Yeah, this this hex tech hand, handler like that. This is a real card. That's a real card. Because it, it also counts itself. So once you've cast that six plus cost spell, this is going to be a four three quick attack for three. Which is pretty good. Which is like, you know, bigger than Senna. Just the first one. And then they'll just keep growing each other. Man, yeah, that card's that card's good. Um, yeah, that's gonna be a, a real nice card for Heimer decks. Alright, then we got this two drop is pretty busted. Pharos Financier. Two mana two two play, you manifest a six plus cost spell from your regions. That card is awesome. So it's just like Conchologist, except for instead of getting a three or less cost spell, you get a six or more cost spell. And so I like this even more than the Conchologist, or at the very least, I like it like on the same level, where your six plus cost spells are gonna be really powerful effects. And you get to, you know, you get to choose with your manifest, you get to choose which one's going to be the best for the, you know, whatever game you're playing. And that's really powerful because, you know, like your six plus cost spells usually help you win games for sure, but they're not ones that you want to put in your deck, right? Because you don't want to like have your deck filled with those like where, um, you know, like where you are falling behind because your whole hand is just like six plus cost spells and you can't play things early. This card is just perfect because it just gives you that early blocker and it doesn't fill up your, your, uh, um, uh, your deck space with those spells so there's just like no opportunity cost to playing this because you get the best of both worlds you get your early blocker and can you know be in combat and everything but then you also get your powerful spells that help you win the game help your jace level up 
all that kind of stuff. This card, you're going to see so much of this card right here. That card is insane. This could easily be a 2-1, not a 2-2, but still, either way, you know, that card is, is amazing. It's a common. All right, uh, then you have Forge Chief, which I think Forge Chief is awesome also. I think both of these two cards are really, really strong. So this is a 1-mana 2-1 that has Strike Refill 1 Spell Mana. So I think that's a lot better than just like your normal 1-mana 2-1s that just simply refill a Spell Mana. Because this, because you basically always strike with your 1-drop when you play it. But then if it if it stays alive, which happens pretty often, then it, you can continue to strike and continue to refill spell mana. That seems like a really strong card. You know, you could see this in different Nami decks, but then obviously like any of these spell heavy decks. You know, so like with these kind of cards, you're able to play a proactive game plan, play your one drops, two drops, and still um, be able to have mana to, to play expensive cards and gain expensive cards. Both of these cards are really efficient and really strong. All right, then we have Acceleration Gate. This is the uh, spell that your Jace will create. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, looks like this is Jace's Shock Blast. So Shock Blast looks like this is Jace's champion spell. Um, so we'll talk about Jace first. So Jace is, you know, your four mana, four, four. Play Grant Me Quick Attack or Challenger. That's, you know, again, just that versatility. That's nice that you get to choose depending on what you what you want. Um and then it, the level up is whenever you cast two six plus cost spells. So that doesn't see that doesn't say that Jace needs to see you cast the six plus cost spells. So whenever you like save your spell mana round one, save your spell mana round two, and play your assembly line round three, then that's already one out of two for Jace, and you know you're just going to need one additional one after that. Or you know maybe you play your Forge Chief on one that refills some spell mana, so you can still play this on three. <clears throat> and then still have Jace on four and so on. And then after you play Jace on four, maybe you get an you know, after you play that other card on three, maybe you get another spell mana, so then you can play Jace on four and then play another six plus cost spell on round five, because you got an additional spell mana. That's possible. So you could level up Jace by round five while also playing a one drop <laughs> and getting multiple three threes on three. Anyway, uh then you're leveled up Jace. It's going to be like a, a toned down version of Karma, because of course Jace does cost one less than Karma, also has just better stats, has a keyword, Karma doesn't have any of those things, but um, you will be able to double cast one spell each round in only a six plus cost spell. So each round, the first six plus cost spell you'll play, you'll get to double cast that. So that's going to be leveled up Jace. So our cha Jace's champion spell is Shock Blast, six mana, deal three to an enemy or the enemy nexus and three to another. Pretty cool card here. It's like that Withering Mist that's that's five mana drain two from two things, but you know six mana deal three to two things. Actually, I think the Wither. I guess the Withering Mist. I don't think you can do the Nexus, but this one can do the the Nexus for one of them. So good, strong six uh, cost spell. Uh, let's see. And then Acceleration Gate is what you create whenever Jace levels up. You create one of these in hand. Give your allies plus two plus zero and quick attack this round. And so the, the keyword's only this round, but then if they already have quick attack or double attack, then you just give them a random keyword instead. So like if you already chose quick attack for Jace, then Jace would just get a random keyword. Um, and it's, it's again, just for that round. But then of course, what, what they're trying to say is you have your, you know, your Jace is leveled up whenever you create it. So it's your first six plus cost spell. So you give your, all of your allies plus four plus zero, you give them all quick attack, and then you give them an, an additional random keyword right after that. So we got some new good cards for Piltover and Zon. Piltover and Zon getting a buff. I, besides, obviously Jace is a good champ, you know, Jace is a champion. The champions are good, you know, obviously, but besides that Forge Chief, Pharos, Financier, these are cards that are going to be, you'll see in a whole lot of decks. And then this Hextech Handler is going to be a sneaky one that could be really cool also. And then, of course, Jace has a boat. So that's even even better. Got Albus. You got a boat for Jace. All right, so some good new Piltover and Zon cards. All right, let's see what else we have in this patch update. And so, of course, the link there to the, the cards are, are there um, if you want to find them. Uh, pers personalization. So we're going to get some new cosmetics. Um, will be available in the Path of Champions event pass and store. So we're going to have some champion skins. So Vi, getting a champion skin. You get Gilded Vi. Looks awesome. And, oh, and a new level up animation. Is this, is this for Vi or for Jinx? I guess this is maybe for Jinx. Or no, this is for Vi. Okay. So Guild Advice can have a new level up here. Oh yeah! 
<laughs> Wait, let's see that again. That, that was weird. What was that? <laughs> Let me eat my shrimp in peace. Alright, so... New level up animation for... Uh, Vi. And it looks like there's some other gilded champs, but it doesn't look like they get the level up animation. So only Vi gets a level up animation. So you're going to have Jinx. Caitlyn. Wait. I just realized Caitlyn has two ends? I didn't realize that. I've always spelled Caitlyn with one end. I didn't realize Caitlyn had two ends. Or or do they do they misspell this here, or does Caitlyn actually have two ends? Anyway, Echo, Echo has got this one looks cool. Okay, yeah, I kind of think this is a typo also. Okay, all right, yeah, chat saying this is a typo. Only one end on Caitlyn, and then Jace, Gilded Jace looks pretty sweet. All right, we got a new board. The Piltover Rooftops. That looks awesome. This board has interactive elements, special visual effects, and music. Cool. We'll click on stuff. We got a new Guardian. We get the Hextech Beast. Okay. So we've already had like that beast. We had like the Lunar Beast. So this is like the Lunar Beast, but they made it a Hextech. And then also the Hextech Minion. Cool. I always love the Minions. And so now we get a Hextech Minion. Awesome. And then Detective Pup, like the Puff Cat Pups that we have and stuff, we have the Detective Pup. That's pretty cool. Yes. Oh, another one, Hextech Poro. Okay, so our Poros. We'll get a Hextech Poro. And then the Drake, even. So if you, you know, play some Shivana Piltoverns on deck, so you get a Hextech Drake. Lots of new little Guardians. All right, what we got for card backs? Ooh. The Eye of Zahn. Cool. We have the Hextech Crystal. Okay. We have the Defender of Tomorrow. <laughs> Above the Clouds. That one's pretty neat. I like that one. All right, so we got three new card backs. So new emotes. Looks like Caitlyn has a new emote. <laughs> you played what? <laughs> Jinx with a new one. Oh, just keep smiling. Everything will be fine. Did you see the size of that explosion? And then Vi, you're going to have to <laughs> try better than that. How about no? All right, then we got new player icons that have to do with the new skins, right? Like these are like the, the new skins for the, the uh, Guild of Champion skin icons. And then the Path of Champion event pass icons. That the... All right, and so our event pass, you can purchase in the store for 975 coins. All right. Purchase before November 23rd to get an exclusive quest. There rewards 10 Hextech marbles. That's that's probably like the little currency that you use to level up. And a rare prismatic chest. The event ends and pass expires December 8th. We also have this, this bundle for 5,300 coins. For all these different skins. And the, there are some deck bundles. I never really recommend the, the deck bundles. I think you just craft the cards that you want. Okay, so a few few different miscellaneous things. First time players will now, ha now have a more streamlined tutorial experience. And the Path of Champions is now included in the new player's initial journey. Okay, in the end of game flow, multiple crest 
quest result screens have been condensed into one. So you know how like you'd have like whenever you finish a, a game, especially in like a, a lab or something, you have like your regular like XP screen and then that goes away and then your like quest XP and like so on. You need to have like three different like reward sc screens like afterwards. So it looks like they're condensing that all down to one. And reduced the number of taps and clicks required to activate guardian animations. You know how like you have to like click your guardian a whole bunch and then it makes the guardian animations. They just reduced how many clicks you need. That kind of makes sense. All right, so it looks like we fixed some bugs. Um, yes, good. Relentless Pursuit is fixed. Because remember how like uh, with Golden Ages, you know, they kill your unit that you're putting the barrier on, you still get the rally. Relentless Pursuit, if you killed the unit that you're putting the plus one, plus one on, you didn't get the rally. That was a bug. So they fixed that bug. That is good. Um... And then just some other bugs that I didn't even realize happened. Okay. And there we go. That's that's going to be the patch. So that's going to be coming out again tomorrow, November 10th, 10 a.m. Pacific time. All this stuff. We got some, you know, about 10 new cards around that and this Path of Champions game mode and a whole bunch of cosmetics with the new event patch. But man, I am super excited about the Path of Champions. All right. So those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button. Leave those comments. Let me know what you're most excited about for the patch. What kind of decks you want me to see? Uh, what kind of decks you want to see played? Um, you know, what do you want to do with Jace? Obviously, Jace Lux is kind of like the big thing that, that people are talking about. But then you have like Jace Karma, Jace, maybe Jace Heimer with that new tech but if you got other cool ideas for jace definitely let us know what do you want to see uh kind of what kind of decks you want to see built all right but that's uh it for for this video so as always thank you so much for watching and we'll see you for the next one